Hey big family, it's Jonathan with the Soundstage. Now sit down and shut up, because I got a lot to tell you. Today's episode is about Gui Gui Sui Sui, which is a Chinese proverb that means sneaky. But actually, this guy comes from Kent, England, and he's made his musical base right here in Beijing. Now here's where it gets complicated. He describes his performance as a dark carnival medicine show. First, he starts off this way, 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 a zombie blues man who's been around for the past century, seeing all the musical evolutions of different kinds of genres which he blends together. Once he gets the audience into the room, he then transforms into King Necro, who is a deaf wizard who actually is the puppet master of way, 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 and uses his skateboard guitar called the Diddly Board in order to eat everybody's soul. Then, so once he eats all these people's souls, then he finally gives his soul power to back together, and using the soul juice to transform way, 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 finally into his final form. Lord Kamehameha is described as the ultimate caricature of a rock star. Got it? Good. <laughs> I think if there's any message that I want to give there, it's you can just go and create as well. Go and do better. Do your own thing and do it better than I can. Got that feeling down in your toes. Walk your spine, teeth to be nose. Your girlfriend's running away. Cruise up, bits in hand. Got a bucket smell going up the street. Starting to go and shuffle in your feet. Sending in a national cloud. It keep you out of control. Well, somebody's gotta tell you, gotta tell you, gotta tell you, gotta tell you, man. You're dead, you're dead. What's that a breaking news? You're dead, you're dead. What's that a breaking news? You're dead. Just to kill the pain First the blood's coming up again Sending in national code Keep you out of control Crack that skull with the coin inside Take an ambulance for a ride To the infirmary Have yourself a peace Somebody's gotta tell you Gotta tell you Gotta tell you Gotta tell you, gotta tell you man So you don't just want to be like Dan Gable with a guitar, you want to create this idea, this fantasy, it's bigger than one person. And then when you create that, it just makes it this whole kind of world that people can get involved with. Whether they like it or not, they can't deny that it's not like entertaining. Rockabilly zombie, yeah, my doll. Rockabilly zombie, give me some more. Rockabilly zombie, give me some more. Who's that knocking at my doll? Who's that knocking at my doll? Beijing, Rockabilly Hall, Beijing, Rockabilly Hall. Zombie. I don't want no pizza, I'll burn down your house, and then I'm gonna eat to fire your brains. I, I studied anthropology when I was a student, and a big part of anthropology was interested in myths and stories and folklores and things like that. So it's almost trying to create this artificial story, this sort of artificial folklore that people can kind of get lost in. Rock with a zombie, yeah, my toe. Rock with a zombie, give me some mouth. Rock with a zombie, give me some brains. Rock with a zombie, yeah, my toe. Rock with a zombie, give me some mouth. Rock with a zombie, give me some brains. Give me some brains. Give me some brains. Give me some brains.
I mean, there's obviously it's for theatrics and it is for creating this character, but it is a, also a shield for me. I mean, people know me as a person, know that I'm just very kind of calm and, you know, placid and just nice to talk to and a little bit shy and quiet. Now, when I put on the makeup and I put on masks and everything, I'm becoming these different people. And it is a ritual for me. I've, I've found that there'll be times when I'm in the middle of a tour and I'll be very tired or I'll be very sick or just in a bad mood, you know, and probably not in the best state to be going and playing a show. But the moment I'm in front of a mirror putting on that makeup, it's like something just clicks. There's a switch in me. And it's like my body just knows it's time to go to work. So it'll actually be like, I'll feel sick, and then suddenly I'll feel that I get this shot of adrenaline and I'm ready to go again. Shri Shri about two years ago and that was when I was living in Dongbei um, and probably the start of it was actually getting the diddly board the skateboard guitar because I already had some ideas that I wanted to do a one-man band and to do something but actually my best friend in England giving me this thing this weird instrument kind of set it in mind okay you have gotta make it happen now just living in Beijing there's so much great music here and there's so many great performers here that every show that I went to within the first year of living here it was kind of like studying you know so I could get, see one show and think oh that's interesting the way he's playing his guitar the way that he's running out into the audience and getting everyone involved that's awesome okay I should try that too so just kind of cherry picking all these different ideas and trying to make this kind of Frankenstein of all these different musical ideas which you know, it's quite an apt metaphor for what Gui Gui Shu Shu is. Gui Gui Shu Shu doesn't pay any bills. This is completely just a hole to throw money into. Um, but that's fine because it's my lifestyle. I mean, my day job, but I'm, I'm a university teacher and I do really enjoy my day job. And I do put a lot of time and effort into it. One of the advantages is that I do get a lot of vacation time, which is what enables me to go and travel and go and tour. 
at best Grigri Shri Shri breaks even. Um, so then I'm able to basically travel for free. So yeah, I mean this year I've done an awful lot of touring. So it's been well over a hundred shows in I think seven different countries, but a lot of that has been in China. I mean, I think in total in China I've toured maybe about six weeks this year. And I do go out of my way to go to smaller cities. Um, and I guess part of it is, on the one hand, I enjoy traveling and I enjoy the kind of adventure aspects. Maybe it's like playing all these video games when I was a kid, like Legend of Zelda or something. I feel like I'm going on a quest to discover some new place or something. On the other hand, like, there were times this year where like, I had a tour set and I had a couple of days off and then I'd get a message on Weibo or something where someone would be like, hey, we saw you were coming to play this city. Where in the next city over? Why don't you come and play a show? And in the back of my head I'm thinking, well, I kind of like a day off to relax. But then instantly I think, what are you talking about? You know, you, you go out to play music. This is, this is what really excites me. This is what I love to do. And if people want to see my show, how could I dare to deny them that?